And I had heard about OnlyFans from my wife, which is a bizarre, bizarre thing. Hi, YouTuber Pete at Irish Times asked me if I wanted to do an interview about Jim Thompson. Thompson was an influential expat who settled in Bangkok after World War II, and he was a real renaissance man, had an impact on the Thai culture and Thai economy. He was a pretty big deal. And as I was reading yet another biography, I already knew a little bit about Thompson. That's why Pete asked me. Uh, so I'm reading yet another biography and thinking to myself, I wish it were possible today for, for to, you know, to be able to have that opportunity to do something special. And uh, while I don't think that opportunity is available in Thailand anymore, it occurred to me it is available. It's actually happening in the Philippines. People using you know, digital technology to have an impact on, on the environment that they're in today, you know, the culture and the economy of the Philippines. And I wrote a story about it. I, I, I decided that it was a more, a more complex story that deserved a, a, a written article, so I wrote an article about it, and I flew to the Philippines to Dumaguete to interview one of the players, uh, you know, the, 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 the most influential player in my story, Paul. Paul in the Philippines, old dog, new tricks. I actually sat and talked with Paul for about 90 minutes, and I recorded a lot of that conversation, and here's Paul. There's something about the Philippines. It's why they have uh, uh, call centers here. There's a work ethic and a need. You know, people need to make money here. There's mm -hmm. a lot of poverty here. And, and there's, th th there's an, an ambition and a work ethic that if they see a new avenue to making money, they'll, they'll grab it. What you're doing is tangible. You're providing content for an advertising company. Yes. And about two weeks ago, you posted a video about how you met May. Yes, I did. Yeah. In that video, you said, uh, when I got here, when I was thinking about moving to the Philippines or something like that, I was watching YouTube channels from guys who lived in the Philippines, and there were about three of them. And then That's you true. laughed. And then you laughed. And then you said, <laughs> there's about 300 now. <laughs> So my question is, how many of those 300 guys are making videos because of you? I would imagine there's a fairly high percentage. Yeah, me too. I would imagine. There's no ego involved in that statement. Okay. But I think that, you know, it's monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. And so they see me doing it, and they say, well, look at this idiot. You know, I'm smarter than he is. I'm better looking than he is. <laughs> I can pull this off better than he can. <laughs> and I got a girlfriend, so I'll start her a channel too, just like he did. And then we'll rule the world. Yeah, here's another uh, uh, element to that story. Uh, I don't know if you want me to mention her name because you never mentioned her, but Filipina P. Uh -huh. Where did she get her start? Uh, she got her start brilliantly. Um, she researched, what she told me, I've only met her once. Uh, what she told me was she's been researching YouTube for about two years. Mm -hmm. So she didn't just go at it fly by night like I did. I mean, this is an organized human being. This is someone that's above average intelligence, um, thinks things through, um, has a great sense of humor, knows how to market. She's got, she hits all the numbers. And so what she did was she reached out to me and two other vloggers and got herself on our channels and then helped launch her. However, I'm of the belief that if she had never done that, if she had never been on any of our channels, she'd still be where she's at. That may or may not I be true. I think it jump-started her. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I appreciate it. gave her a quick, quick boost, you know, that happens. I've done the same for other channels, and I've watched them flame out because they can't do what she does, which is produce content. Uh -huh. And you have to have content. The very first words that I heard from people that did YouTube and you know, were talking to me about it was they said, Paul, it's all about the content. Everything else is just window dressing. So if you can't pull off content, it ain't gonna happen. Um, I agree with everything you said about uh, about the tea. She's, she's good at what she does and she works hard at it. Oh my God, she works hard. But nonetheless, the point I wanted to make, and I appreciate your humility, 
is you boosted her channel. She went from not very much to uh, to a big functioning channel after mm -hmm. being on your show, on mm -hmm. your channel. Yeah, it got over 100,000, 150,000 views from, on my channel, which right. I think so, most of those people subscribe to her. So in the context of what I'm talking about now is getting back to your influence on the culture and impact here, because if you follow down the, the P road, there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of Filipinas mimicking her. I don't know about that hundreds of thousands, but I know that there's many that see her success, are envious of that success, and are trying to duplicate what, I see a lot of copycat stuff. Actually, I saw one that did exactly the same story about two days later. Yeah. Um, if And it was getting views. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about the P, which I have to give my hats off to her, is she's ahead of the curve. Yes, she is. In other words, I didn't know what the hell a passport girl was. And boom, one day she comes out with the passport bros. And I'm like, what the hell is a passport bro? Well, she knew. Yeah. And then um, OnlyFans. She just recently did a video on OnlyFans. And I had heard about OnlyFans from my wife, which is a bizarre, bizarre thing. And at the same time I heard about it, she came out with a video. And I'd never heard of them either. OnlyFans. You know what OnlyFans is? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. But my wife went to the dentist and the dentist is has always been very complimentary to my wife about her figure and she says boy you know you're so thin <laughs> you got... yeah watch this dentist <laughs> unless and it's a woman I, keep yeah. an eye on him yes. <laughs> i'm going to questions about our dentist here <laughs> and talk to me like that <laughs> but she's always very complimentary and then she said you know you got a youtube channel because she follows my dentist follows me and her and she goes my god she says you know with your figure and all that you should do only fans and may said what is that and she goes well, it's it's like what you do but you make a lot of money at it that was her explanation to may so may comes out of the out of the office she had her braces realigned or whatever they do and she goes Dennis said I should be on OnlyFans. And I said, what the hell's OnlyFans? Yeah, so yeah. I went and looked it up, and I said, yeah, you're not doing OnlyFans. No, you're not doing OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than just making videos and making money. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, but there is this, uh, on that topic, I'm probably wandering on you here, there are a lot of female vloggers that are doing what I call OnlyFans light. And they're doing... Um, very sexually orientated graphic titles, thumbnails, conversations. They're not showing anything, but they're discussing it. And I'm watching that go like this, but I have a feeling it's going to go like that. Um, it's just a feeling. Yeah. yeah. But here again, you are at ground zero <laughs> to, yeah. to use a metaphor of, of uh, the uh, and there are others you know there are a bunch of other fairly six that young guy from russia alex uh yeah he yeah just, he took off yeah he took yeah. off and he's yeah. again he's put some work into it yeah but uh same as p he got a he got a boost from you he got a boost from a couple of other yeah. bloggers and um you were at the genesis of where this started to happen here in this region, in this mm. part of the world, and you have a big audience of, of older expats, and yep. and and uh, and you've helped kickstart this kind of thing. Now, why did I bring up Axie Infinity? Because it shows that there's, a, you know, an energy, an interest, a, a, a tendency, a propensity here in the Philippines to latch on to something that might make the money. Right. And right. Um, while that failed, they might be wanting to direct their energy into something that'll work and YouTube sure. is working for many of them it is and so getting back to what I originally talked about with the Jim Thompson Alexander McDonald influence back in the 40s right you know what's what what's an iteration of that fast forward to the modern you know to, to present times you know how does somebody have an impact on the culture and the economy of a country and you might just be doing that and you might have already started that ball rolling down a hill 
And I'm just using these examples as, as a way to say there might be something more profound going on than just making videos and talking to expats who mm -hmm. want to come and find a young bride in the Philippines. Right, right, right. Um, and that's what my story, my written story is going to be about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of the reasons it has to be a written story because there's a lot of depth and nuance and details and, you know, sure. and side stories that have to go together to make this a coherent uh, idea. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's what the story is going to be about. So, you know, are you Jim Thompson? No way, Jose, you know, <laughs> but might you be having an impact on, on, on a, uh, on a region and a culture? Uh, you know, are you, you know, that, that American that might be making a contribution way bigger than you might even be aware of? Yeah, I still can't grasp it because I'm just an ordinary schmuck. You know what I mean? I don't have a college degree. I mean, I took the first job I could get that would hire me when I was a kid. I left the house early, grew up in a dysfunctional household, and had all these, all these issues, personal issues that I was dealing with, frailties, faults, um, I'm almost surprised that I'm still sitting here. <laughs> Some of the things that I've managed to pull off. But um, I think that that's probably where people relate to me, is that yes. they know that I'm just another average schmuck, you know? And um, that's relatable, as opposed to beating my chest and telling you how great I am, uh, because I'm not. I'm just like you, or like him, or her, and I think that it, people can relate on that level. I think that's the key, and it was unbeknownst to me. Um, I f didn't go at this with any kind of business plan or any kind of outline or anything. It was just, like I said, I did a video. People talked me into doing YouTube, and they actually had to almost force me. In fact, a guy had to come over and set me up. He said, I'll just come over and set it up for you because I don't know anything about computers. I'm, not, I'm just not that way. And he did it for me, and he did my thumbnails for me, Monty Crew. And he's the guy that made the channel for me. And he said, you just do videos. Don't think about anything else, and I'll take care of the thumbnails, and I'll take care of the, the rest. <clears throat> and then after about a month that ended, because he had an emergency in America, and it was left up to my own devices yeah, to try to figure that was, out. Uh, his fences were falling down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for nothing now, pal. <laughs> but that was cool because it made it uncomfortable and it made it hard. And I had to work at it. And I either was going to quit or I was going to plow forward. But I was having too much fun doing it. I was getting satisfaction from doing it. And I worked. Um, you bring up the P. She went on two channels and then she went on my channel and within a week two weeks she was monetized thousand yeah. subscribers watch hours and took off like a rocket yeah. which she deserves because she put well, some time yeah. the energy and the effort into it um, it took me 11 months to get to that level <laughs> before I earned a dollar on YouTube yeah have you heard, you've probably heard of Leo Tolstoy, the Russian yeah, yeah, writer. Yeah, yeah. So Leo Tolstoy was a, a philosopher and a writer, mm. you know, great Russian. And uh, he had a philosophy that uh, men don't make history. Great men don't make history. History makes great men. And what he meant by that is that um, history brings an opportunity forward. And the person with the skill set present at that time is the one that's going to bring that forward. In other words, you know, he was talking about Napoleon, you know, mm -hmm. because Napoleon was a big deal back then. And, uh, you know, it, he said if it weren't Napoleon, it would have been some, someone else. It wasn't Napoleon that created, you know, that epoch. It was, it was history that created it, and Napoleon stepped into it. That moment same, in time. Same would be true, true with people like Bill Gates or, or Steve Jobs. They were both about the same age. Uh, and it's because they had a skill set appropriate to 
the moment when that digital thing was happening. Sure. And um, for what might turn out to be something significant in in uh, in this YouTube digital kind of confluence that's going on right now in this region, you might be that guy. Well, I don't think so. I would disagree with that. I think that there's a, a newer, younger, faster, better generation coming in behind me. I really think that probably my best YouTube days are probably behind me, mm -hmm. not in front of me. That's me being a realist. Well, getting back to Jim Thompson, the guy I opened the story with, he, he, his big deal was he, uh, he took Thai silk weaving, which was a cottage industry at the time, and modernized it and made it a, 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 an internet, a multi-million dollar international business. So of course there were thousands of copycats that came about quickly. Right. They're still there. They're still right. making right, silk. Right. So is the Jim Thompson company is still there. As a matter of right. fact, this is a Jim Thompson trip. Okay. Um, the, uh, I think it is anyway, but I like his stuff. It might be something different. But uh, uh, the, uh, the point is, is that, yeah, you, you, I don't know if you peaked or not, maybe, maybe not. But you kind of set the model in place, at least for this reason. I am proud of that. Yeah. I am proud of the fact that I kick-started yeah. something kick for someone else. Yeah. You know, and, and there is a day, everything, to everything there is a season. And so I think that my season is probably coming Quoting the Bible. To the That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to talk about narratives, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we have seasons of our lives. This has been a great run. Um, I would love to have it continue on for years. Um, if it went down to no views, uh, I, would, I, would, I would still always leave the channel there because the channel was originally, and it's still today, it's the same, is a video diary of my life. That's and a, yeah, that's what it's story. for. Yeah. And that's, I've never moved away from that core principle is that that's what this is for. It's for future generations of my family or others that can learn or, or gain something from it. I've been very, very blessed in that I have had, when I have been nakedly honest with myself and nakedly honest about my faults and my flaws and my insecurities, I have had so many people give me feedback that have said, you know, you saved my life. You, listening to that video, I was no longer alone. I thought I was the only one that felt that way. And you have given me hope. So it brings a tear to my eye when I get those emails or those messages or those comments. And so that's the payoff for me. Sure. Yeah, I never went out to be the biggest or the best or the brightest or beat the P or beat anybody else or have a million subscribers it's it's not it it's something i did for myself it's a it's a passion project and i'm proud of it and i can always look back and say hey i did that yeah. you know and maybe i'll and who knows it could be a springboard for me to start something brand new you want to try to catch me on that one <laughs> well, paul i really appreciate you sitting down with me and, sure uh, you know, I'm going to have fun writing this article. It's kind of rolling in my brain as we're sitting here talking. And uh, it's just great to spend time with you. You're, you're, you're more charming in person than you even are on videos. I appreciate you, Hot Charlie. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. What Paul and I were discussing was a pretty big topic. And that's why I chose to write an article about it that I've posted in a few places. There are some links in the description of this video where you could find the written article. And um, it goes into a little more depth and, and, and detail than the conversation that I had with Paul. So if you want to see that, you know, if, you want, if you'd like to read that, you know, check the, the uh, description on this video. Uh, there'll be some easy links to that. And thanks for watching. See you soon.